I will talk about the future of uh, green gas, uh, looking at Europe, but also taking a global view. Uh, we have to do three things. First, we have to get the electricity sector green, which is uh, the bar. Then we need to get electricity to take on a greater share. And the third challenge, of course, is to decarbonize that remaining uh, piece of the pie, which we can only deal with molecules. And the two macro challenges we have are how to decarbonize heating, and this applies to Europe, but applies to the rest of the world, apart from the equator. And then the second challenge is how to decarbonize the so-called hard to abate sectors. And I'm not so optimistic that there will be a quick switch from coal to gas in the near term. I'm much more optimistic and hopeful that there will be a switch from oil to gas. But let's now focus on 2050 and how uh, clean gases and green gases can play a big role in decarbonizing. Let's start with the biggest challenge, which is that of heat. In the first uh, big challenge, which is to decarbonize heating, gas and clean gases can play a huge role just because of this kind of intrinsic advantage they have, that they can be stored for a long time, transported over long distances, and transported and stored at a very low cost. As some of you may know, SNAM is Europe's largest transporter of natural gas and storage company for natural gas today. And we're also investing on the downstream, on the output from our pipeline. We want to make sure we have compressor capacity to put biomethane or methane or hydrogen eventually into vehicles. And we want to make sure we have LNG infrastructure to put gas into trucks, into ships, and into cars. And we think we need some liquefaction, small-scale liquefaction, to be able to do that effectively. I think we've been the first in the world to fully test a 10% hydrogen blend end-to-end. -end.